Now, what's the concern with high-dose methotrexate? Well, it causes toxicity, as you might imagine. Initial experience, about 6% of people that were treated with high-dose methotrexate died. Um, when they introduced therapeutic drug monitoring, which is doing kinetics individualization at St. Jude's, which was, start, which was suggested by a pharmacist there called um, um, Bill... Um, not Bill Miller. Why can't I think of his name? I'll think of it in a minute. Bill... Anyway, famous pharmacist. He's now the head of St. Jude's. Um, he's now the CEO of St. Jude's, a pharmacist, which is pretty unusual. Bill Evans. Thank you, Bill Evans. It came to my mind. I knew it would. Um, since they started introducing therapeutic drug monitoring to treat high-dose methotrexate, they've had no deaths. Um, and they've treated, this is old data now, but in 15 years they treated 300 patients and there were 3,000 treatments, so they did about 10 treatments per patient and had no deaths. And remember here, this was a 6% mortality. So whether it's 6% of this or 6% of this, let's see, 10% uh, would be 30, so uh, what's, um, 3 times 6 is 18, right? So it would be, um, 18 patients would have died in this group, which might have been 180. I don't know if this is per treatment or per patient, but consider that 18 lives, 180 lives, maybe. I don't know about you, but these are mostly kids, and so 18 lives uh, is huge to me um, that we can make a difference in. Patients at the greatest risk for high dose methotrexate. Greatest risk for high dose methotrexate toxicity, which is basically what happens is you uh, wipe out the bone marrow and they're not able to mix any cells, um, is if they're dehydrated. So remember, we have fluids, 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 and more fluids. Acid urine, remember, we have to keep the pH of the urine above six and a half. Renal dysfunction to begin with is a big risk factor. Pleural effusions, because the drug hangs out in these pockets in uh, of effusion from in the pleural space and hangs around in the body longer than it's than we intend it to to and that's what happens with the cites as well remember that graph i showed you i'll just go back real quick these people these people are in danger because the drug is hanging out longer than it should um GI obstruction and other nephrotoxins that are given or other drugs that are competing for secretion sites. So obviously when drugs are, when you decrease the renal clearance, you're also going to have higher concentrations than you intend. Um, <clears throat> once high dose methotrexate toxicity damage occurs, it cannot be reversed after 42 to 48 hours. So you've got two days to reverse it. Basically when we give this high dose methotrexate, we try to wipe everything out. And then we give um, a rescue dose of leucovorin to try to rescue the patient from the brink. It's really a pretty horrendous idea, but it, it does work. So we send them down this path, and then we rescue with leucovorin. Um, methotrexate concentrations um, may be too high for low dose leucovorin. If that's the case, they're going to be at high. They're going to be at risk for toxicity. If you have a patient with ascites or pleural effusions, the 24-hour concentration may be normal. Again, let's go back and look at this graph. The 24, if we look at 24 hours here, the 24-hour concentration may be just fine. It's not going to show up until later, right? Um, but we'll need to be monitored for 72 to 96 hours and continue leucovorin until the concentrations fall. This is the this is the magic number. You want the con you want the methotrexate concentrations to fall to be less than. This is not less than or equal to. It's less than 0 0.05 micromoles per liter. Yes. Are we talking micromoles again? We're talking moles again. Yes. Remember, we want to give enough leucovorin to match the mole for mole with the methotrexate. Ah, and that's what I'm saying here. Try to produce an equal molar concentration to the methotrexate. So once you've wiped out the cells, you then have to rescue, and you want to have an equal molar concentration to the methotrexate that's on board. Um, if you're giving leucovorin, 
The bioavailability is about 0.75 or about 75%. It is also nonlinear. So bioavailability is 75% up to a 50 milligram dose. So if you're giving more than 50 milligrams, you need to give it IV or IM or break up the dose. So you might give 50 milligrams now and then wait two to three hours and give another 50 milligram dose if you need to give 100 milligrams. The half-life of leucovorin is about 30 minutes for an active, um, for the active L isomer. It's, it's a racemic mixture. Here's our little uh, cheat sheet on uh, leucovorin uh, equal molar equating milligrams to micromoles. So 15 milligrams PO gives you about 0.5 micromoles per liter concentration. You have to be careful because you don't want to give too much leucovorin because you might also compromise the efficacy of the methotrexate to begin with. So this, this rescue is pretty tricky. This is an indicator of people that are at low risk and high risk of the methotrexate toxicity. So this is the time after beginning the dose. So most of the doses are given over 24 hours. So we start here, we stop the drug here. If you get a level here um, and it's 1 or 10, you're still in that low dose, low risk area. If you check at 30, and they're still at 10, you're in the high risk area. If you're in here, it's unknown. If you're under here, you're in the low risk. So if you get it 44 hours after beginning, you're gonna wanna be at, I don't know, this is probably 0.8 or 0.7. Um, you certainly don't wanna be anywhere up here. And if you are, that shows that you're not clearing the drug or maybe there's an effusion somewhere that's <coughs> causing the drug to hang around longer than it should. So what this does is helps give you an idea of who's at risk and who is not as, as much at risk for methotrexate toxicity. This is a really nice little flow uh, diagram that helps you to determine what you should be doing with these patients. Oops, sorry, my dogs aren't barking. Okay, so if high dose methotrexate is indicated, you need to determine if they've got problems with renal dysfunction. Obviously, if you have renal dysfunction, the drug's not gonna be cleared as well, and therefore, you're, you're gonna have a big concern. Um, do they have prior cisplatin therapy? That will cause renal dysfunction. Is there a third spacing? This means, are there places where the drug is just gonna hang out? We talked about pleural effusions, ascites, et cetera, or a GI obstruction. If any of these things are in play, you're gonna have to think about whether or not this is appropriate, okay? You're gonna definitely need to give leucovorin rescue according to the table I'll show you in a minute until the methotrexate concentrations fall below 0 0.05 micromoles per liter. If you don't have any of these risk factors, then you move over here. You go ahead and administer your high-dose methotrexate with adequate hydration and urinary alkalinization to avoid that precipitation in the kidney. Is the dose greater than five grams per meter square? So are you giving, are you treating an osteosarcoma? Then the case would be yes. If you're treating ALL, it would be no. Oh, wait, I forget how, what the dose is. But anyway, depending, if it's greater than five grams per meter squared, then yes, uh, we wanna um, move over here. You need to obtain samples at the end of infusion, which is considered time zero in this case, um, six hours, 24, and 44 hours from the end of infusion. And then you wanna make sure that that concentration is falling the way you want it to, if we look back at that graph um, that I showed you. If you're not giving big doses of this drug, then you can wait and obtain a sample at 24 and 48 hours from the beginning of the infusion. Um, are they at low risk? If yes, they are at low risk, then you can go ahead and uh, continue conventional low-dose leucovorin rescue. If they have some high-risk features, then you're gonna to have to watch them more carefully and possibly give leucovorin. Um, if they're in this high dose group, you get more levels and you estimate a half-life. 
and uh, you try to estimate where they're going to be. If the half-life is less than three to five hours, that's a good thing. Then you know that they're eliminating the drug. Um, so then you kind of go back into this category. If they're not eliminating the drug normally, then you're going to have to adjust the rescue the leucovorin rescue uh, per table three, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so it's pretty prescribed. You just follow this through, and basically you're just making sure that they're eliminating the drug normally. Here are three different regimens of uh, methotrexate. One is 1,000 milligrams per meter squared to 2,000 milligrams per meter squared given by IV bolus, and then you follow that with an 800 milligram per meter squared 24-hour uh, infusion. Um, and you can read these on your own. Um, what these do is tell you when you're in trouble. So if you, if you get a level at 42 hours from the initiation of the infusion, so you start the infusion, it's given for 24 hours, so you get it whatever number of hours later than that is, I can't think right now. If your concentration is greater than 0.5, you're at high risk. This is micromoles per liter. Same thing here, only it's if it's greater than one. Okay, and here at 24 hours, if it's greater than 10, and here's all the concentrations you might want to get, and you can see if you're in this boat of high risk. If you are in the high risk group, then um, here's where this would be your methotrexate concentration that you have at greater than or equal to 42 hours from the initiation of the infusion. If you're at, let's say, uh, seven, so you're in this group, then your desired concentration that you need to get of the leucovorin is 50 to 100 micromoles per liter. And so you're going to give 100 milligrams per meter squared of leucovorin IV every six hours. So this prescribes everything for you. So we're going to work with this with some cases in class. Okay, that's it on the methotrexate. And uh, the next section is going to be on pharmacogenomics. I'm just going to talk about a few pharmacogenomics things with cancer therapy. So thank you for listening. Bye-bye now.